Welcome to the first episode of the AMREF podcast, placing people at the center of Africa's health systems. And I'm your host, Halima Sabwa. In today's episode, we'll discuss the intersection of people-centered health systems and primary health care, exploring how these concepts align to empower communities across Africa. Joining me today is our special guest, Angitimu, Program Director of Family and Reproductive Health at AMREF Health Africa in Kenya. Welcome, Anne, to the show. Thank you, Halima. Um, as you've heard, my name is Anne Gitimo, and I work as the Program Director for Family and Reproductive Health at AMREF Health Africa in Kenya. I lead our work um, in working with government, with our stakeholders, with communities, to ensure that our uh, mothers have a joyous pregnancy, they have a safe delivery, and thereafter um, they recover well and that their uh, newborns survive and thrive. And also we work a lot with um, young girls um, and boys to ensure that they fulfill their dreams um, in education and thereafter joining the workforce. So it's really a pleasure to be here today uh, in this podcast. Thank you. You're very welcome. That's excellent. And we all know right now that the government is big on primary health care and primary health care initiatives. So can you explain what the intersection between primary health care and people centered health systems is? Additionally, how uh, people centered health systems can give Kenyans better access to health care services? Uh, thank you, Halima. Uh, primary health care is an approach that uh, governments uh, use to organize the health systems. It's uh, not a new concept, but there has been a recent uh, recommitment to um, support primary health care. And uh, majorly, it looks at three key areas. The first being the whole issue of ensuring that services are integrated and that they are holistic. Secondly, is that um, is about the social determinants of health, ensuring that um, important issues such as education, infrastructure, climate, uh, livelihoods, amongst others, are um, addressed in order to improve health, and also that uh, policies um, uh, looked at, you know, they are multi-sectoral in their actions as well. Then thirdly, is about empowering individuals and communities to take action. So um, in summary, that is about uh, primary health care, and um, yeah, it's, it's quite an important approach that uh, the government has, has uh, picked on to ensure that uh, uh, Kenyans uh, achieve uh, the highest um, attainable health. Okay. Thank you. And what do you believe the intersection between primary health care and people-centered health care systems is? Yeah, thanks uh, for that question. Uh, first and foremost, when you look at uh, people-centered health systems, it's putting people at the center of health systems, ensuring that you understand their needs, you understand their preferences, their aspirations, and their values in the context of health systems. So primary health care is very important in regards to um, pushing this whole agenda on people-centered health systems. The first issue is about uh, equitable access. Primary health care is about um, ensuring that people are, um, have access to health services, including people who are in last mile, uh, people who live in informal settlements, uh, rural communities, um, as well as um, uh, like refugee populations, amongst others. So ensuring that they are accessed with, uh, uh, with services, which is a, a PHC strategy, it addresses that whole need of putting people at the center. Also, um, providing quality services is very crucial for people-centered health systems. So uh, in that regard, it also contributes to ensuring that um, Healthcare workers have the right uh, skills uh, in terms of not just provision of services, but also understanding these needs, the aspirations, the preferences, how they communicate to clients, getting feedback, and that kind of thing. So the two are quite interlinked and um, are mutually re reinforcing. Okay. And in AMREF's 2023-2030 strategy, how does our organization promote integrating people-centered healthcare systems and PHC to improve access and equity? Um, in our strategy, which is uh, primarily really about transforming the health of communities uh, through primary health care, 
and uh, one of our key pillars is actually people-centered health systems and the other is about uh, addressing the social determinants of health. When you look at our strategy, the first thing that we are looking at is about convenient delivery of services. It's about equitable access. How do we reach uh, communities uh, that are nomadic, uh, have a nomadic lifestyle with services, ensuring that we are uh, scaling up models that we have tested in the past to ensure we reach this kind of communities, working with um, women, with men, children who live in formal settlements with models, at, uh, scaling models that are able to reach um, highly mobile populations uh, in urban cities. So that is the first thing that we are looking at when we look at uh, people-centered health systems. Then secondly, uh, our strategy looks at quality. And uh, when you look at quality, while it has many dimensions, we are looking at uh, do we have um, the right skills for health workers? Uh, do we have the right numbers? Is the equipment, commodities, and facilities? And all the building blocks of the health system, just to ensure that uh, um, women, women and others, and children and men, are reached with quality services. So in that regard, uh, it's about looking at the needs of, um, of, of the communities. Then thirdly, our strategy is also looking at uh, things to do with uh, governance and accountability, ensuring that institutions are strong to respond to the needs of uh, communities and also that um, they're held accountable in terms of uh, the policies that, that you have come up with as a country and also various commitments and also ensuring that the that communities are resilient um, to various shocks such as drought, uh, floods, and the like. Yeah, okay. thank you. And we've talked about local communities and their needs. So how can these communities actively participate in designing and implementing healthcare systems? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, I would, uh, there are various ways. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is uh, something, uh, is, is, is an approach that we have employed over time as AMREF through the human-centered design. Just ensuring that we are um, co-creating and co-developing programs with local communities and that their needs, their preferences are taken into account. So this is an approach that we use in all of our programs to ensure that uh, the community voices, the women voices, the voices of the girls, of the men are part of that program. So the first approach is uh, the human-centered design. Then secondly, is about uh, identifying champions from communities. For example, we work um, a lot on um, uh, GBV uh, under the program that I work in, and uh, majorly in the work of female genital uh, mutilation or cutting. So creating a pool of champions of either uh, girls or women who have undergone the practice or not, but in ensuring that they have the capacity to uh, make a case for themselves in regards to policy, in regards to legislation, and even taking action at the community level to ensure that girls are protected uh, from these harmful practices. So um, that is another way of involving local communities. Mm -hmm. uh, thirdly, um, is about uh, working with the very local uh, community-based organizations, building their capacity uh, we have a model that we have dubbed as organization development system strengthening, ensuring that they have the capacity to um, implement programs for, for themselves to hold um, stakeholders like AMREF accountable, governments accountable. So just ensuring that uh, local communities also through their CBUs have the requisite skills to be able to engage. Thank you. Excellent. And as we wrap up the discussion, we've already talked about some of the strategies that AMREF employs, but what strategies does RMNCAR specifically employ to foster more effective engagement with government and other stakeholders? And this would ensure that, you know, Kenyans remain at the heart of uh, Kenya's healthcare systems. So are there any strategies in place as RMNCAR that you could share with us today? Largely, uh, we draw from the organizational strategy, and mm -hmm. that is what we implement at the program level. But of course, we uh, deal with um, perhaps very different needs. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we do is, uh, let me give again the example of human-centered design. 
So while we understand that a woman who is uh, pregnant has very particular needs in terms of their reproductive health needs, we want to, through the primary health care approach, we want to look at this woman as a woman who could also uh, be exposed to uh, non-communicable diseases. So ensuring that there is uh, preventive actions or there is also screening and referral for treatment. So looking at this woman, not just as a pregnant woman, uh, but as somebody who needs services beyond re reproductive health services. So that is one of the things that we explore using the human-centered design. And um, another thing that we do that is uh, very specific to um, uh, reproductive health, reproductive and maternal health, is um, uh, because we offer a lot of services at the, uh, we support we give technical assistance to government to uh, offer services at the lowest level, dispensary at community level, is ensuring that there is a feedback mechanism mm -hmm. from the communities, uh, from the women. Are they happy with the services? What would they want to see improved in the health facility? What would they want to see improved in the community health services? So ensuring that there is that um, um, a feedback mechanism is very crucial for us to improve our services. Then the other important thing that we do, uh, which is also uh, organizational, is about um, performance improvement, ensuring that we are using data, uh, that we have very strong measurement, we are using data to make decisions, that, that data is collected uh, at every level and that it is visible for policy makers, for technocrats, at the community level for community health promoters for them to be able to improve, to take action, uh, corrective action, and also to scale things that are working. So those are some of the things that uh, I would mention that uh, we uh, deploy as a, as a program. Okay, thank you so much for that. And to our listeners, thank you so much for joining us on our first ever podcast on primary healthcare and placing people at the center of healthcare in Kenya. I am your host, Halima, and if you have any concerns, questions, or queries, our YouTube link is here, our Instagram link is here, and our Twitter link is here. And thank you so much. Goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.